right. Mono amigos, we've got a special presentation for you tonight. Um, a super amazing band that I got wind that they're um, putting out a new album called Bird Brain. I'm going to talk to them about it now. The band is called Zuffalo. Just waiting for members to join into our online chat here. And we'll find out more about this amazing album. Also, it's like upbeat, funky jazz. It's definitely towel rock. I don't know how they would classify it. Most people don't know of towel rock, which is why I say that. So we'll, we'll get into that stuff too. A whole bunch of stuff coming up in the next minute or so. Hey, Rob, how's it going? Good. How are you guys doing? Very good. Awesome. I, I, I was just warning Sean that I've already uh, hit record on this just so that I don't miss anything at the beginning uh, once right. we get going. Yep. Okay. That's cool. So I, I guess I'll jump right yeah. into the stuff here. You've got a new album coming out, uh, Bird Brain. And I, I was listening through the uh, the first track, Birdman. Who's yeah. the Birdman? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you are, man. <laughs> I'm the Birdman. Okay, wow. I'll have I to don't know. I, I mean, it's 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 kind of like a fake manager of the band. I don't know. It's uh, we like birds, you know. It, with the name, <laughs> with the name and everything, the name we got from well, Zuffalo is a. Uh, a flute to train birds, known to have trained birds. Really? So, okay, that yeah, was another yeah. question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a lost Italian word that um, used to be spelled with one F, and I think there was another, uh, Z-U-F-O-L-O, -O, I think is the original word. Zuffalo. Yeah, and it's like a type of flute to train birds to do something. <laughs> so Whatever um, you want them to so do. So anyway, it's a, it's a musical <laughs> connection. And it's a bird connection. Um, yeah. I don't know. Neat. Yeah. It's just fun. Oh, that's cool. It's just for fun, you know? Just Yeah. And so uh, on the on the cover of this album, too, it's got kind of like, I don't know if it's a honeycomb type uh, artwork. Um, who, who put this artwork together? Or how did that come about to be your artwork for this album? Yeah, so it is a honeycomb. Um, the artist is Polly Agnew. She's uh, a friend of ours, um, and uh, she she did the artwork, and uh, we sort of communicated. She started with something that she just came up totally on her own that was very fantastical. It had the spider web zuffalo and the like, sort of foresty type stuff, and we communicated back and forth, and we added the honeycomb idea, and uh, um, yeah, it just came together through working with uh, her. So she's She's an Ontario artist. Cool. Do you do? Is she the one that you use for a lot of your artwork? Because a lot of the artwork on all your uh, on, on the Bandcamp page for the singles that you post and, and your other album are all very neat, intricate uh, album covers. The first, the first one was uh, Greg Coffee, really that uh, really like psychedelic uh, painter and artist. Yeah, the first one was him. Um, Ricky Shade has done some stuff for us. He's a, yeah, the one with the tree is Ricky Shade. We just like, I don't know, we like art, art, I guess. So we yeah. <laughs> hire artists. Some, things. some of the, the single covers, like from the isolated sessions, if you were looking at our band camp, uh, were made by either Mikey or Sean, actually. Um, just sort of made them. Is Eric around. here? I am here. Yeah. Hey, he's here. Hey, huh? Eric. Hi, Eric. Yeah, I Hello, wish guys. I Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Yeet. I can't. I can't see you, but I can hear you. Yeah. With, with the with the isolation sessions, are you guys recording those like separate, or do you come together and, and put something together for these isolation? Because I'm seeing at least a couple really cool in your background, uh, almost recording studios. Yeah, so the isolated ones we've done all separately. So usually someone will write something and kind of put a little demo together and then we send it around and everybody kind of adds their parts, which is, it, it's such a different process that way, but it's it's cool because, you know, each new part gets added and then it kind of influences the next layer. And um, yeah, so those are, we're all done separately. I mean, we live together, so some, you know, some of our stuff was together, but uh, yeah. 
it was all separate. It's, and it looks like, so did you guys get together at around 2018-ish or earlier than that? Um, that's, that's, I think I, I saw your first full length album. Yeah, so um, Michael and I met, uh, we're playing with another drummer before, uh, Drew Austin, and uh, we met Sean in 2016 in the fall. So that's kind of when we like formed. Um, and then, yeah, I guess it wasn't until 2018 that the first full album came out. Um, and then we played with a couple other drummers in there, too. We played with uh, Eddie Max and Adam Bernstein, both of who played with the Fat Cats. I don't know if you know of them. I, I, the name sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. yeah really cool Ontario uh, jam band. Um, and uh, uh, and we met Eric. I think we started playing with Eric like a, about a year and a half ago. Is that right, Eric? Yeah. I believe the first gig we played together was October 2019. Wow, got your calendar in front of you, eh? <laughs> yeah, ready to go. <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> Very prepared. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so, uh, so you came together around then, and I, I imagine back then the recording and the practicing was very different than it is now. Um, so with, we with this... No, <laughs> with with the isolation kind of passing the tracks around, do you like that better or is it just different uh, or no. what, what are your thoughts? I mean, it's cool, but I'd rather play with, with, in a room with these guys. Yeah, yeah I, I think I think for me, that was just um, the isolation sessions were an attempt to keep the music going sort of despite the circumstance. It, it wasn't I don't think it's something we would have done. Uh, voluntarily, let's say, but I, you know, any way that I can create music is in any format better than not doing it at all. That's my perspective. So I'm happy to swap files and and share ideas and try and get songs together, no matter what circumstance. So it was just kind of a desire to keep keep things rolling. Cool. Is is this album more uh, a, a standard recording style or is it this kind of passing songs around uh type recording this was a standard style so we actually got together uh last spring was it may no it was august august sorry august that makes more sense <laughs> pandemic wise yeah um yeah last august so we managed to actually bubble together um with our good friend mackenzie jordan who is our producer and engineer um at his studio um and uh we yeah we were together for about a week um recording live off the floor, off the floor and it was it was yeah so it was you know classic style it was so much fun <laughs> to actually yeah be in a room playing together and um yeah it was it was great and so and Mackenzie studio space is out in Baton, Ontario so it, it's out away from the city which is always uh nice for me anyways to to be in that space away from the city yeah actually be able to focus on making music we saw a crazy uh asteroid it was huge oh, one yeah. of the, one of the nights we look we eric he, eric was like oh yeah there's supposed to be a good light show tonight and the asteroid i felt like i could see the rock <laughs> like you know like it was like a oh yeah yeah unbelievable cool. so then we were like now we know what to do. We went back. <laughs> <laughs> that guided you. That guided the rest yeah. of the album. <laughs> nice. So, because I'm, I live near Baden in Waterloo. Oh, Baden okay. is probably I don't know a half hour drive from Waterloo. Okay. Well, yeah. And yeah. So that's why I was thinking. I saw that your first album was also recorded in Baden. Yeah. And so. Yeah. It, okay. But on your uh, band camp, it says you guys are from Toronto. So I was wondering if, if it was here, but sometimes people put Toronto because it's a bigger city. Oh, no, no. Um, so we all live in Toronto. Eric's in uh, Windsor right now, but usually, you know, we're all in Toronto. Um, Michael and I used to live in Kitchener, and um, we that's where we became friends with Mackenzie Jordan. And he grew up in Baden. So, um, so that's his place there. And, uh, we've just always stayed connected with him and it's awesome that he's such a great friend because he's a great producer to work with. And also it's so nice 
that uh, when we're there, we don't have to be worried about time constraints either because he's our buddy. Like we kind of <laughs> just we kind of hang out and and work together, and we don't you know have to worry about by the hour kind of thing. Um, so yeah, so that's the connection there. It's all true what you've read. Recorded in yeah. Maine, we live in Toronto. It's all true. <laughs> nice. nice. There's also another album. I was listening through a bunch of the stuff on, on Bandcamp, and I'm trying to look. In the Valley, was that, it, so it says it's live instrumental. Was it type, like the type where it was live in, in a studio? Because it sounds studio produced or studio recorded. We just, no, no, that was um, at a, what was like a part, I guess a little bit of a private party or something. We set up some mics and, just kind of so there was an, for it. there was an audience there, yeah. but like a small audience. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so we we recorded that one. We rec we we basically just hit record and played two long sets uh, of long instrumental jams. So the whole thing probably played for over three hours. And then um, over a few months, we we edited those down into some sections that felt a little more cohesive. And uh, and it, people in the band helped. We all kind of did it collaboratively to mix the album. Uh, and it was originally intended as a bonus for the full-length album, and it was a, a feature of our Kickstarter campaign and stuff. So it was sort of a two-for-one album thing. So yeah, but that was a live show. Cool. Yeah, it, and it sounds amazing, especially if that is kind of like the sound, and, and also with your recording live off the floor, it has this nice live feeling uh, that, that, that translates to kind of what people would see should shows ever start up again for if they were able to come out and, and uh, support you guys at a, at a live performance. Um, I noticed in those sessions, especially towards the end of it, it gets, I, I feel like, spacier or uh, more psychedelic than uh, what is on the album. And is that kind of a live thing that you might do? Or is that just for kind of like a jam session uh, type thing? Uh, no, that's definitely something we would do live. Um, and what we do with our albums is we try to kind of capture that live essence and go a little bit into that like space, that improvisational space kind of space. Um, but while also keeping the songs concise enough to be on an album, um, you know, um, but that's definitely a part of our live show. So yeah. beware. <laughs> <laughs> do you think uh like right now i feel like it's it's if if people are releasing and putting out content like a lot of these youtube sessions that you're doing are a i guess a little bit more necessary to get the word out that things are coming out with new songs and, and things like that but uh when do you guys foresee and maybe it's too hard to tell that you'll be able to start putting shows together and, and different things like that. Yeah. Or do you, do you like it kind of with this? Uh, like, uh, to be honest, I almost like connecting more with artists like this. It's just easier that uh, in the past artists would have to come all the way out to a station from Toronto and, and sometimes for uh, a 15 to 30 minute interview, it'd be, too much of a drive and they could do it if they were doing a show and things like that. So I believe all this kind of brought on, I don't know, almost a different side that there has taken a hit to music, but almost like this type of connection is kind of neat as well. Yeah, I would I would agree with you on that in, in some respects and some aspects of life, or maybe, you know, it's nice for us to, to connect this way, but I think that there is no substitute for live music and for the experience of community that you get with a whole bunch of people in a room together experiencing the same thing together for a set or a night or whatever. I think that there's no substitute for that, really. Um, you know, like Sean was saying, like these isolated recordings, they're a way to make the best of a situation and we're still making music, but like we would absolutely rather be playing shows. Um, and uh, uh, in terms of when we're going to be able to do that, I don't know. We haven't really, um, we don't have, there's like a potential show in the summer, but you know, everything is sort of like 
you know, it'll happen if. So yeah. it's hard to say when we'll actually be able to return to doing our thing, but we will I mean, sometime. It's a good time to be recording, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and I mean, with, with some people with more time uh, due to isolation, I mean, I, I feel like a lot of people are saying, too, that this is a, a hard time for uh, mental health. But if people are into music, I feel like putting emotions and things like that into music is a great way to support your own mel- mental health. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I find I find music quite cathartic myself. So I, uh, I think that uh, my mental health is definitely helped by music. But I would also say that it feels strange to release music during a pandemic. You know, that it, it maybe a little, I, I'm, I'm slightly nervous that it's going to feel a little anticlimactic to put the record out because normally, well, with the first and other projects I've been a part of, you know, there's CD release shows and we try and make a real event out of it as best we can. Um, and that live show feels, it gives, it gives me closure that, you know, it's the, it's the end of the project. So I feel yeah. as though making music and channeling emotions is fantastic and important for me, but also it's going to feel a little strange to put out an album in this yeah. cultural we're, context. We're going to spend a lot more money on shipping. <laughs> that's a fact <laughs> but yeah i mean the, the release shows are such a celebration and uh now it's going to be you know a little bit of like a click here and now it's out like it i think yeah. interactive <laughs> is the word for sure um, but but at the same time see. but we intend, music we intend, video yeah, time. We intend to do yeah, some dude. kind of music yeah, yeah. exactly and we, we do intend to do a celebration whenever we can in a safe way and maybe it'll be six, eight, nine months after the album comes out, but we, we were still thinking, call it an album release. Yeah, we were thinking of doing like a live stream a- uh, album release kind of thing. Maybe but we'll, we haven't really fir- firmed that up. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, we got to see what happens if it can be done in a safe manner and all that. So it's everything's up in the air. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like that's how it is with a lot of bands that are releasing stuff now too, and it's a I. Uh, on the one hand, I understand the the dilemma and how it's it's less uh, climactic and, and things like that. But it, it's also an interesting time to be able to say that you released an album during this. And uh, because I don't think there's been a time like this for music, it, at least in the, the recent past, that uh, anyone can can fall back on to say that you have to do this and, and so it kind of is opening the doors wide open to whatever you want to do it, it's okay and i i don't know that's kind of an interesting uh thing for me also it's true yeah I, le- I learned how to play trumpet during the pandemic so nice probably- I, I was gonna ask i don't know um i probably wouldn't have uh, been able been able to give a serious attempt at it well i mean i could have but probably not (laughs) is that you on uh so i i think it's the track and and i'm just going from memory here um i think it probably one of my favorite tracks on the new album is big man and there there is some i i don't know if it's a saxophone i thought it was a saxophone but is it trumpet well there's there's um saxes like there's a a sax a tenor sax and a berry sax and trumpet playing together yeah on on big man like the like uh the shots and then there's like a a, the sax solo though well there's two other songs that have trumpet just trumpet on them uh (laughs) at the end of birdman has uh a trumpet playing sort of like bird-like kind of sound going through a wah pedal um, and through an amp i think yeah so that's mikey and uh also there's just a tiny little moment in uh what's the other song with the it's sean's song with the the zocalo oh yeah the, there's an island somewhere uh yeah okay yeah. there's yeah, like a there's little, a little uh, mariachi kind of little part that we uh very speed sped up yeah <laughs> yeah yeah. Cool. So, and but so, it's, a spe- it's a it's a special guest on the saxophone, Gordon Highland. That's, it. that's right. He's from around. He's yeah. from around like New Hamburg, KW. Okay. We didn't actually get to be there yeah. when he was recording, and that 
is because of COVID. Um, if you know the pandemic wasn't happening, then we probably would have all gone back to the barn for that overdub and like worked together as a group. But it just didn't seem safe at the time. So um, just Mac. so Gordon got together just with Mac, the producer, and it was just the two of them working off like our charts and our notes, and they kind of you know um, worked without us. I think we were kind of. You know, on the call sometimes, but it, but it was definitely a, a disconnected process. So uh, I've never actually met Gordon, and uh, I would like to. <laughs> he did a good job. So wow. yeah. yeah, that's crazy because it sounds like as if you were all in the same room recording the, the, those parts to it. Yeah, really yeah. Neat. And in a lot of cases, that's true. Like a lot of the parts for. The whole album are like that, but there were some overdubs, and and that was one of them. So, and so they would just send you, do you like this mix or do you like this take that he did, and, and then you would approve it and send it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. He he did a few takes, and then we kind of compiled from there. Yeah, mm. maybe flowering rush. I don't know. That song was kind of always sitting around before before the album. I feel like that's kind of. I, I think of that song for me as, as the beginning of the album to me. like just as far as we, we, we that was the one we were playing live before. <laughs> yeah, that song's been played live a lot before. Yeah. Unlike most of the other songs, I think. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So you go, you go into an album with a handful of songs or one or two songs and th that kind of does that one shape? The, how you record the album like is that kind of or is it the the comet that kind of uh directs your path <laughs> <in return? laughs> um what do you think eric definitely the comet <laughs> <laughs> well we came came together we had lots of songs by the time we got together there was one there were two other songs actually that we recorded that didn't make it onto the album um, just for space, you know, keep the length of a vinyl. Uh, so um, we just had a lot of songs and we kind of, Dem you yeah. know, picked the ones that went together the best and uh, put them in the order that we felt was best. And uh, I don't, mm. yeah. I mean, yeah, like, when I, when, yeah, when the, when the, this pandemic first started, you know, like everybody, I, I had tons of time on my hands all of a sudden and I have a little home studio. So almost right away, I just started recording demos and ideas. Uh, and so when the recording session finally happened in August, I just kind of brought all the ideas and said, let's see if we can do something with these. And some of them turned into songs and some of them didn't. So yeah, I was, we were all kind of came with a bunch of material and, and let the, the good ideas float to the surface. Yeah, because there were actually three songs that didn't make it on. Because time is a flat circle, we ended up doing the live video for instead. Because yeah, so we just had a lot of material when we got together. Tropics in the Torrid was one that we left off of the first album, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's so true. some of these uh, ones that are left out could show up in the future as a reworked. Oh yeah. Project. Sure, yeah. Yeah, most likely they will. Yeah. Cool. Um. We, yeah, maybe uh, maybe we could do an EP or something in the future. Maybe. We on Mono A Mono call everything that we play towel rock. Uh, we say we soak up just all genres and and and, uh, <laughs> and and play great music. There you go. Cool. I like that. Oh. You're frozen. Oh no. Hello. Can anyone hear us? I can. I can hear you guys. Okay, he's, he, he's just frozen. Well, yeah, yeah, it'll be a second. I wonder what he's going to say. Happens. Welcome back. <laughs> Sorry about that, man. I that's never happened to me before, where my whole internet just cut out, oh, and okay. so I quickly grabbed uh, a Wi-Fi card, and for some reason, it works on Wi-Fi. Hey. Crazy. Oh, oh. okay. But I'm Welcome still back. recording and everything. So there, there we go. go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I feel like we were kind of... You were uh, saying something uh, about a towel. Towel rock. Yeah, towel rock. You're, rock. you're like, like, talking about how you, you love to go on the beach and everything. Yeah. Soak up all the good bands. That's yeah. right. <laughs> um, so how would you... Uh, 
I don't know, maybe you answered this while I was kicked off, uh, how you <laughs> would uh, define your own sound. Well, I mean, like I would, I might use a different word than towel, but like I, I think that that's true for us that we soak up lots of different genres, and I don't know if we are just one genre, right? Yeah, um, I, I think that we want, we want to make music that people will dance to, um, and uh, that's an important part of it. Um, so sometimes I'll say that we're like a funk inspired rock band, although we're not a funk band. Um, we're also inspired by blues though. But yeah, so um, yeah, you know. Psychedelic runk funk. Runk funk? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Nice. I mean, there's, root, there's rootsy elements, but we're not just a roots rock band. Um, yeah, so Take like and we, and, and we draw some improvisational things from from jazz as well. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, we, we're certainly not a jazz band. <laughs> yeah, we have a hard time defining ourselves as the idea of genre is over since the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like it. I like it because I was reading a lot, and when I was listening, I was it, even for me, it was hard to define the sound, which is, I think for a lot of bands, that's a good thing to have your own voice and your own sound. And uh, I, I thought a lot of the words that were kind of up there kind of fit, and it was kind of like an upbeat, like happy, but like you were saying, funky, jazz, even even a lot of the live stuff that you said you were recording had a lot of psychedelic, especially towards the end of uh, that set, which I thought was very cool. I, I listened to a lot of post rock and stuff like that. So uh, all that stuff is like a perfect playlist that I would put on just to work in the background, which is awesome. Nice. Um, the, way, the way I'm feeling about it uh, these days is, um, if I could pick three bands that uh, kind of maybe, you know, encompass mostly what our sound, total sound, would be like the Grateful Dead, um, the band, so like Rootsy stuff like that, and uh, something like Led Zeppelin, that's like a little heavier. Um, and then uh, also when it comes to songs like Big Man, which maybe stood out to you because it's sort of a little maybe different than the rest of the songs, um, I, I wrote that song and I'm personally really influenced by Fiona Apple. Um, okay. so that's sort of like what, out of left field in a way, but um what what genre yeah. is, are the are the Beatles? Are they a rock band? I guess, yeah. Would you say you, pop rock? Yeah, you put on but then you put on When I'm 64 and then you put on Helter Skelter. And it's yeah. like, what genre are they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. I mean yeah. rock. Rock is it's I would say yes, we are a rock band with it because we that's probably the closest thing to what we do, you know, is rock, but then but it's just ruined by bands like that will go unnamed. I don't know. <laughs> I don't yeah, make yeah. any enemies. Rock, got a, a couple that come to mind too. Yeah. 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 Rock is such a broad term. So, you know, we're not, not a rock band, but it doesn't really define and yeah, and if you go by if you go by instrumentation, I think that it's a lot. The guitar is often the the, the focus in terms of the, an instrument, so yep. that sort of puts us within the rock world. If you think of it in terms of instrumental focus, sometimes maybe I don't know if that's helpful or more confusing. Uh, well, to find out more about Zephalo, um, go to our website zephalo.ca or check out our Bandcamp, which you've got there. Um, Definitely, you can expect uh, like a welcoming community experience um, and a dance party and uh, um, something unique for that show, too, because it is improv. Uh, there's, there's improvisational sections that are different every time we play them. So you're going to get a unique experience at each show also. That's true. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to be welcome. foster a good time. Cool. <laughs> Um, You'll be welcome to like you're part of the family. And yeah. and just to, to jump in in a related sense, the album, I I often think about when people might put on Bird Brain. And you know, I I think it's kind of a Friday night 
good times album when you're hanging with friends and stuff. So, I mean, I, I think yeah. you could put it on every night, but uh, Fridays especially, yeah. You can, yeah, you can, yeah, it works there. <laughs> Awesome. Any time of the day, you can Every put other it night on. Of the week I mean, yes, time. play it all, play it all times of the day. Yeah. <laughs> any, time of day any day of the week, especially Fridays, Friday nights. <laughs> like it's probably more of a party time album than it is like a good morning album. Although yeah, I don't know how people wake up these days. But you never know. Yeah. Maybe you wake up with a rear in the go. That's true. <laughs> Plus, that if you work your, your, your phone alarm to wake up happy. There you yeah, go. If you work <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again for being here. That was awesome. Thanks for All right. Yeah. Thanks, Rob. thanks again. That was fun. Thanks for having us. So there it is, Mono Amigos. My interview with Zuffalo. We had a little bit of an issue there where my internet cut out. It seems every time Windows goes to do an update, it just cuts everything off. Anyway, um, they were great about it. We were able to jump back in, finish things off. Make sure to check out their stuff. New album, guided by past songs and comments. Check it out. Live supporting shows whenever. Who knows? We're not sure with the pandemic. Make sure to check out their YouTube page. Make sure to check out their Bandcamp page. Awesome stuff. More to come right here on Mono A Mono. <laughs>